I'm Jason Carter. Physical optimization defines my life. The day I was born, doctors nearly killed me with medical malpractice. They said I'd never walk. I've been proving them wrong for 35 years. It's easier than you think to obtain super optimal health. I've devoted my life to it, and with my help, you can too. I'm Jason Carter, and this is Enzyme Mental. And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter, and today I wanted to tell you about something that I've dealt with in my years as a recovered sugar addict, and something that millions of people struggle with every day because, in part, of their consumption of sugar and refined carbohydrates, and that is candida. So candida is a fungus or a form of yeast that normally resides in the gastrointestinal tract and aids in digestion. As we all know, yeast live on sugar. Not surprisingly then, the typical high carbohydrate Western diet or the standard American diet, the SAD diet as it's appropriately called, sets the perfect stage for candida overgrowth. When you combine this with other factors that destroy the beneficial gut bacteria that are necessary to keep candida in check, like, for example, antibiotic and drug overuse, mercury fill-ins, chlorinated water, low stomach acid, and the severe lack of fermented foods in our diet, then you have what appears to be the perfect conditions for creating a candida overgrowth. When you feed sugar to yeast, the byproduct is alcohol. So under ideal circumstances, the alcohol from candida, just like any alcohol you might consume, is converted to acetaldehyde, which is then oxidized to acetic acid and eventually to acetyl-CoA, which is used for cellular energy. Unfortunately, this isn't always what happens. The majority of our population is severely deficient in various nutrients and enzymes necessary to quickly and efficiently make this conversion. In addition, people who have an overload of candida are constantly subjecting their bodies to alcohol, even if they aren't drinking actual alcoholic beverages. In a 2015 study on individuals with chronic fatigue and candida overgrowth, a blood alcohol test followed by a second test taken two hours later after the test subjects had consumed a glucose-sweetened drink clearly showed that blood alcohol levels were significantly higher. So this helps to explain not only why many individuals with a candida overgrowth are very sensitive to the effects of alcohol, but also often feel drunk after consuming sugar or any highly refined carbs. And this is only part of the problem. So when there's an overabundance of alcohol, or your body lacks the ability to con fully convert the alcohol, it can result in an excess of acetaldehyde. Alcohol makes you drunk, but it's acetaldehyde that gives you a hangover. Acetaldehyde is exponentially more toxic than alcohol. So acetaldehyde is broken down by the enzyme acetaldehyde dehydrogenase, and the prefix D means to remove and the word hydrogen comes next. This enzyme removes a hydrogen atom and transforms acetaldehyde into acetic acid. So a couple things about acetaldehyde dehydrogenase that are quite interesting. Women actually produce much less of this enzyme than men do, and many Eastern Asians and American Indians produce a form of this enzyme that is far less effective at breaking down alcohol than Caucasians. So as a result, they will become much more intoxicated on less alcohol. Acetaldehyde, which is closely related to formaldehyde, is what causes liver disease and pancreatic damage from alcohol abuse. Individuals who have problems breaking down acetaldehyde also have a greater risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Acetaldehyde is classified as a probable human carcinogen, a neurotoxin, and it's also toxic to the respiratory, immune, and endocrine systems. It impairs the transport of oxygen by blood hemoglobin molecules and severely compromises brain neuron activity and function. Acetaldehyde is also one of the compounds you find in cigarette smoke, vehicle exhaust fumes, and also industrial smog, and you also find it widely used in manufacturing. It's typically grouped in with plastics, dyes, fabrics, adhesives, fuels, preservatives, and fragrances. The pervasiveness of acetaldehyde further explains why individuals with candida overgrowth can be so sensitive to their environment. Their inability to break down any excess acetaldehyde can often cause even the most trivial exposure to wreak havoc on the body. So how do you deal with the toxicity of acetaldehyde? 
It requires that it be metabolized, detoxified, and cleared from the body, and the chemical pathways in the body that accomplish this require certain minerals, calcium being one of them, and also nutrients. And many of these, as you can imagine, are deficient in our diet. Adequate amounts of vitamin C, A, and the B vitamin family are critical in this process. Sulfur-containing amino acids like cysteine are also necessary in dealing with acetaldehyde. Cysteine is one of the amino acids that make up glutathione, which is one of the most powerful free radical scavenging compounds in the body. And it also helps to incorporate some molybdenum. We talked about that in a prior video also. It's a little-known and underappreciated trace mineral, and the metabolic pathways in the body that metabolize acetaldehyde are actually dependent on adequate levels of molybdenum. So how do you eliminate candida? The obvious solution for candida overgrowth is to reestablish the beneficial gut bacteria that keep it under control. In milder cases, this can be done with the proper prebiotics and probiotics, especially found in fermented foods like sauerkraut and kimchi, and the elimination of sugar, white flour, and other refined carbs. There are many variations of candida diets, but in all, the removal of sugar, alcohol, and refined foods are essential to starve the candida of its preferred food source. There are many guides to these diets you can find online. How drastically you'll have to change your diet depends on the condition of your digestive tract. In more severe cases, the candida has become so entrenched that its numbers have to be reduced significantly before other beneficial microbes can gain the upper hand. So diet alone generally won't fix the problem with an acute case of candida. It also typically requires the use of natural antifungals, and grapefruit seed extract and olive leaf extract are very good at this, but you can also find benefit with coconut oil, oregano oil, garlic, that's my favorite candida killer, D-limonene, malic acid, and peldiarco. In addition to dietary changes, a sample program might include a tablespoon of coconut oil, two or three cups of peldiarco tea, and three capsules of an extract or oil of what I just mentioned before. So as unpleasant as candida can be, and as much as you want to eradicate it completely from your body, the truth is you can't completely remove it. And even if you could, you really shouldn't. Because candida, like I said before, actually plays a vital role in our digestive and immune systems and overall health. And like many of the other microorganisms in the gut, it only becomes a problem when its numbers get out of balance. And there are plenty of things in our diet and our world today that help to propel that. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.